Okay, so what we want to do today is to set up an Allen Bradley Micrologix 1100 programmable logic controller to operate a conveyor motor and some lights. And so setting up the programmable logic controller that it has inputs on the top, outputs on the bottom, and it needs power to come in to actually turn the PLC on and operate. What we've got here is a conveyor system that's set up with a track and it's got a motor that basically runs the track around the frame and it also has a limit switch. And this limit switch goes on to the track and the limit switch has a roller on it and every time a box would go around the track it would cause this limit switch to actuate which then would send a signal to the input side of the programmable logic controller. We also have a push button station, a stop start button, that's going to come up here and it's going to be inputs to the PLC as well. So the stop button would be out input zero, the start button would be input one, and the limit switch would be input two, coming to zero, one, and two to the top part of the PLC. We have some outputs on the bottom. And these outputs come from output 00, output 01, 02, 03. These outputs are sending a signal. When the PLC gets the appropriate signal to the internal switching, it will have the red light on, or it will switch to the yellow light when the limit switch is actuated and it pauses the conveyor system for five seconds, the yellow light comes on. The green light comes on when the conveyor track is actually moving. So when the motor is actuated and we hit the start button, then it will lock the contactor, it will send a signal to the coil that's around here, 120 volt coil, I see the neutral on one side and the hot on the other. And that signal will actuate the contactor and the contactor will close and it will send a signal to this outlet. And the motor is plugged into this outlet. So that way when the start button's actuated, the mag starter starts, the green light comes on and it sends a signal, boom, the conveyor starts running. So let's take a look at the PLC and see what it is close up that we have because this is important. That if you notice on the output side, on the output side, there's red wires and black wires. This output one, or output zero actually, and output one, and output two, and output three, they have power coming in and the power is actually waiting. It says 120 volts AC, and there's actually power at each one of those outputs just waiting for the internal switching to close so that way it will send the power out to the red light, the yellow light, the green light, and the motor. Or I think I see the motor's on zero, so. But anyway, it has to have power on one side so when the internal switching hits, it sends power through that black wire to each one of the units. The inputs are on the top. So we've got a neutral, that we have to have a neutral on for the inputs. And then the input, the input one, or the first one is the stop button, the second one's the start button, the third one is the mag starter that's going to operate that. Now we notice here on this side over here that we've got a red and a white. This is the internal power that comes out, comes in here and actually turns the PLC on. So you have to have power there as well. We need a neutral up on top for the inputs, and we need power at each one of those outputs, zero, one, two, three, waiting for those. So that's important to know. So, I think we should go upstairs and actually take a look at how we want to build the program in the computer to actually talk to the PLC. What the program is gonna do, it's gonna basically have the red light on, until it's started. And then when we hit the start button, it will turn the conveyor track on and it will keep going around and around and around, moving the boxes 
until it hits the limit switch. Once the limit switch is hit, it will stop the conveyor track, it will shut off the red light, it will turn on the yellow light, and it will hold for five seconds. After five seconds have lapsed, it will shut off the yellow light, and then it will turn on the green light and the mag starter, and the track will run again. And we're going to have the track run through a cycle of five times where the limit switch is hit, turns on the yellow light, pauses it for five seconds, turns on the green light again, and it goes. And after the fifth time, the red light will come on, saying that the program's over and the conveyor is stopped. All right, so we're trying to program an Allen Bradley Micrologics 1100 programmable logic controller, a PLC, in order to operate a conveyor motor and some lights that show the mode of operation of that conveyor track and motor. So the program here says, develop a PLC program to operate a motor on a conveyor system that will stop when a box activates a limit switch on the conveyor track. The conveyor track will cycle five times, stopping each time on the limit switch for five seconds. That will continue around the track until it stops again for the final time on the fifth cycle. There are three lights, red, yellow, and green. The red will be on until the program has been started. Then a green light will come on and stay on until the limit switch stops the box. Then a yellow light will be illuminated until the five seconds pass and the conveyor starts again with the green light coming back on. The red light will come back on again after the conveyor has stopped the fifth time and stays on until the program is started again. So we took a look at the PLC and the mag starter and the light box and the conveyor motors and the push button switches downstairs in the lab. And I've drawn a pictorial diagram of the PLC, the light box, the mag starter, the conveyor motor, the push button station, and a small diagram of the conveyor track with a limit switch that would be on the conveyor track so when a box comes over the top of it, it will push the limit switch down and activate the yellow light and shut down the track. So what we had was the inputs on the top part of the PLC. Input 00, input 01, input 02, etc. There was a whole line of them. And we needed to put a neutral on the input side. It says, and it actually shows on the inputs where the neutral goes. Now we have on the bottom where the power came in for the 120 volt and the neutral to power the PLC. So that way it comes on. And then we had some outputs, output 00, output 01, output 02, output 03, et cetera. I think uh, there's like eight outputs on there. And we needed 120 volts on each one of those that were just waiting so when the internal switching hits, it will send power to, and the first one, output 00, went to the motor, so it went to the coil of the contactor and the mag starter, and then came down and once that was actuated, it would come down and feed power to the motor. We had input 01, which came from the start button. Excuse me. Yeah. And then we had the stop button for the input. So we had the limit switch, the stop button and the start button that were inputs into the PLC. The outputs from the PLC, one went to the motor, one comes up here to the yellow light, two comes up here to the green light, and the last one, three, goes to the red light. And so we need to figure out how to program this PLC using the Rockwell software for the Allen Bradley Micrologic 1100 PLC so that way we can operate the internal timer and the counter. The internal timer would be for five seconds so that way it would hold the track still for five seconds and keep the yellow light on for those five seconds. And we also need the counter so that way it'll count how many times the limit switch has been actuated and stops the conveyor track from running. And we had five cycles. 
So the counter will count to five. And after the end of that, the red light will come on. So let's program the PLC program, the ladder diagram, the, the line diagram on the computer.